we're going to talk about river mussels. River mussels are an important food source for peoples of the past, and the river mussels live on the downstream side of large boulders, and they root themselves in sandy parts of the river, or even in muddy parts of the river. And here, on the edge of the river where we are, they can be found about 10, 15 feet out, about five feet down, in the part of the river that won't get dry during uh, the driest part of the year. And what I'm going to do is dive in and get some examples of them for you. I'm going to cheat, of course. I'm going to use a mask. But peoples of the past could have done this just simply by opening their eyes and looking underwater and finding the river mussels. So let's go see if we can find some. So within a few seconds of being underwater, I could see them rooted in the sand. I could pull them out very easily and bring them up on the shore. Each one of them is a small package of meat that can be cooked under a fire and also uh, just simply steamed and you can eat them as they are. So as we've excavated, we've uncovered a river mussel. This species is Margaritifera falcata. It's one of two river mussel species we have in the Salmon River Canyon. This is a river mussel shell, and these are important because they can tell us about the environment at this time, about the aridity, the precipitation through stable isotope analysis. They can also give us pretty good date range through radiocarbon dating methods. As the shell is exposed, students work to take samples from around the shell. We'll be able to use the sediment samples they've taken to establish whether or not this shell is in the right associative context with the layer that it was found in. This allows us to figure out whether or not a radiocarbon date that we could get on the shell would be in its right position. Um, mostly just wrap it in well, kind of to keep it from getting contaminated and also to keep it together because they're very fragile and they will break when we kind of pile them up to collect samples for the XRF on the east, the west, and beneath the item to basically show that it's not inside a growth of Ravina. River mussel shell is made of calcium carbonate and we can examine the geochemistry of the shell and learn things about past conditions in the Salmon River Canyon. For example, the chemical composition of calcium carbonate is CaCO3, so we can pull out the carbon, we can pull out the oxygen, and we can study elements of paleoclimate when we look at the oxygen. It tells us things about rainfall and how rainfall has changed through time. This works because these little critters are sitting in the river being passive recorders of the river water as it comes across uh, where they're sitting and they respire the water in and out, they filter feed, they pull the oxygen out of the water to make shell material and in the process of that they record the condition of the river water at that point. Because the shell will be thousands of years old we can tell what the conditions chemically of the river water were like at that time. Now that we're back at the lab at Oregon State University, we're going to take the river mussels that we've collected from the site, and we're gonna to start to study them for what they can tell us about paleoclimate. So this machine we're looking at right here is a binocular microscope that's set up to work at a set distance away to give room for this little device that's underneath here. And this is a dental drill that we have set up to a stage that allows it to move in horizontal and vertical movements. And using the dental drill, I can watch through the microscope and I can drill out very specific parts of the river mussel shell. So 
So when we drill the shells, we get powder of the carbon, send it off to a laboratory on campus that measures the isotope geochemistry of the shell. Now why this is important is because the river mussel, they act like little weather recorders. They do this by pulling elements out of the water as it passes over them. And the elements and their isotopic composition in the water is determined by things like climatic change or climatic condition at any one point. When we get enough of these shells from archaeological sites, we can begin to build a series of snapshots about the climate. And we order them depending on their age, and it can tell us what rainfall is doing in terms of is it raining more, is it raining less than today, throughout time.